Hello, Vida Nation. Hey, what's up? What's up? How are you all? Let me say a few shout outs. Emmanuel Torres at Hughes Unit, all listening in Brandon, Mississippi. Michael Thomas and Maury, North Carolina. Darren Curl, I believe that is still on Beto and all of Beto. It's been a long time. What's up, Beto? What's and up, I Darren? know lots of people have moved, you know, yeah. lots. Of, it's changed a lot at Beto, I know for sure. Um, Jamie Oaks and Maury, North Carolina. Uh, Northern Regional Jail in West Virginia, everybody there. Derek Comco in Holton, Maine. All Red Seggers, uh, Nacho and all of you guys. Of course, I know many are moved, so whoever's still there, um, thank you. We love you guys so much. Pierre, South Dakota. Wow. Michael Scott and every Muslim watching across the nation. We love you. We're glad you're with yeah, us. Right. And um, God loves you. And so we're so glad that um, you guys are watching and listening to Fort Leavenworth. Hello to all of you. We're hearing a lot from Fort Leavenworth. Right. That's awesome. And so I'm so glad to be hearing from you guys. Willisee Unit, which I didn't know existed in Garza West. Hello to everybody okay. watching there. And Tanika Wilson in Lee County Jail in Fort Myers, Florida. Eric Arana and Estelle Unit. And anybody that we missed, I think he's a four there. Uh, we did miss going to a a pod of G4s, right? ECB5A was the pod we missed. Okay. Yeah. There was a couple other places that we wanted to go and we 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 didn't, we couldn't go and we tried our best. We started at eight in the morning. We did not eat lunch and we didn't finish until what time? Oh, I mean, we got out of there at 4.30 or 5. Yeah. 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 So um, anyway, we will try to go back. Definitely. You you got some good chaplains. You got a good chaplain over there that looks over high security. And he was like, I want you guys to get my people. Yeah. Right? <laughs> and so we were going to start at 9. Yeah. And he called and, and asked yeah. if we could come in at 8 to make sure we got to all those people. And I'm so glad he did. Because yeah. had he not done that, we would have missed more people. Yeah. And we were so glad to meet them. We got some pictures you're going to show yeah, them, right? Chris got some great pictures and we'll kind of cycle through. This was one of our unit selfies in the worship service. And we had to do them in sections. Oh, yeah. and you moved it too quickly, that picture. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, go There's... back. You see how the back row of those they're like little tiny dots <laughs> on their heads and everything because they were so far yeah. back because there were there were at least 500 men in there yeah. um they were crazy great yeah like they were not afraid to worship yeah um on. so sam wasn't there i was so sad to miss that yeah. one and um <laughs> you know like usually she helps me with the music and um i didn't really want to do it by myself but um they were a good choir in the yeah, background like because everybody was yeah. singing and worshiping and it was so cool so um it wasn't so hard to do so show us some more okay pictures. so there's a uh, film minister jimmy delgado jimmy delgado and he's not delgado at all <laughs> he's, right? a big he's guy. not like yeah. he he's built like um the Incredibles, the, uh, the Mr. father, Incredible. Oh. Yeah, Mr. Mr. Incredible, Incredible, like is so wow. weird. Like he really is. Like you, that picture don't even show. Like he's so broad and mm -hmm. massive. You realize tomorrow everybody's going to be calling him <laughs> Mr. Incredible. Oh yeah, right? we just gave him yeah. a new nickname. Yeah. Hey, Mr. Incredible. And he was he was the one who was taking us to all the pods yes. on the ECB yes, unit. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, thank there, you so, so much, and thank you to Jimmy and all the workers that go back to seg and fives and fours, you know, and those that can't come out. Thank thank you so much for visiting these guys for sharing the word for sharing your love or just be a listening yes. ear when you can like we appreciate it as a bunch so of suicide much. prevention guys that were going with us life coaches uh peer support again coaches. I, yeah. I have to say like every time we go in a unit it's like we already know them yeah. Like it feels like home and it's like okay let's go A team Come and, on. and we start going yeah. you know around to the pods and I don't know it feels like we were just there yesterday yeah it's so cool. Anyway, look at this. You got to talk about this picture, honey. Yes, this yeah. is a mural that they made with so the Real cool. Vida yeah. logo. Wow. And they even got the turn it up on there. Yeah. That's my favorite. <laughs> yeah. Oh my goodness. I, we loved it so much. Thank you so Come much, on. you guys. Pray that for that means the whole yeah. world to us. Right. Yeah. Wow. What we're, a surprise. Yes. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be talking about prayer tonight. We're praying for the hoods that we Pray live in. Come on. Here's us and some of our guys that were um, back there on that, on that particular pod where they had the mural, so it was great to be back there. And here's some of those guys. Yeah, I think that guy to my left. When you move too quickly again, uh -huh. um, I think that he's. I think he's the painter of it. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's really cool. awesome. All right, so uh, here's these guys saying hi, mom. Um, here's some of the guys there in service. This was one of the. 
I mean, there was no way to get everybody right. in one picture. I think we yeah. took that in like four sections. Yeah, yes. at least four sections to get everybody. Uh, Ada had a lot of fun because she was doing her songs and all the guys were <laughs> repeating her lyrics. <laughs> they knew the words. It was crazy. Uh, we got to go and see the Veterans Dorm, which was so cool. Wow. Uh, it's an amazing place, really. Um, here's my honey ministering. And here's just some of the guys. We'll cycle through them. And we're going to show as many as we can. There's no way to show all of them. Um, we got to go to nine different pods. Listen, listen, yeah. listen, listen, Linda. Yeah. Okay. So so this picture, Ada, was, Ada showed it to me because she got the stills and put them up on Facebook. By the way, Estelle, you can send your loved ones, your family, to the Real Vida TV TV page. Right. And you got hundreds of hundred pictures of us, of us hundred, right. from all over, all over, everywhere. Every, went up, went up, ready, already, and so they can snare them there. Ada showed me this picture, and she's like, this is my new favorite picture of you oh. two. She <laughs> said, it's like, you know, when you have a baby in the hospital and you're going peeking through the window at your baby, right? Oh. Um, she said, that's how it was. And I was like, well, they're oh. my spiritual children, yeah. right? We were, we were seeing them and we were so glad to be there. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. Here's some guys that are really happy to oh, meet us. We were so we happy, were happy to, to see meet them. them. Meet them. Here's just a so few many. of those guys. We got to go to a, G- a G2 dorm uh, there. And so we got to meet a bunch of guys there. It still has some some specialties, right? You know, we yes. want to say hello if we haven't, right? To the, the, there was a blind section. I thought that was cool because I went up to the table where they were sitting and the guy recognized my voice. Right. Mm-hmm. He's like, he turned to the other one and he said, this is Mama Eve, the one I was telling you about. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, wow, he, he recognized my voice. We also want to say hello to the hearing impaired. Amen. Um, who were in service. That was so great. Right. It's going to say how to feel there yeah. in the middle of that right. picture. Hey. Yeah. That's Chris did time with him on Beta. I did. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, also, you know, uh, they have a really good warden over there, Warden Britt, who mm-hmm. was a major when I was at Beto, and he was a great major. But, you know, everybody over there that I talked to said that Warden Britt is doing a great job. And uh, just shout out to him, man. Absolutely. Thank you for doing such a good job. That picture right there is of the guys who are, are physically blind, but they are not spiritually blind. Come on. Come on. Right. Yeah. And, and you better, you, you rather be physically blind than yes, spiritually right. blind, I tell you. And in that the table where you walked up and they recognized your voice? Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. That's Mama Eve, right? All right. We'll get through some of these pictures. And we're going to show more, you guys. We're going to show a video, yeah, right. I'm sure, on the next podcaster. You know, when we get to it, get it edited. All right, I got to talk about this for a second. I got caught out by a guy named FedEx in one of the pods. Uh, and so the guys that were on the team with us going from pod to pod, um, they they decided to put me on front street because when we got to the next pod, they said uh, somebody challenged them to a push-up competition. So we did push-ups. And all I can say is some of you guys, you should be ashamed of yourself letting a 50-year-old w- lawyer beat you in push-ups. That's Brett that's, there. That's bad. Beside that's, that's Jeremy. Brett yeah. and me. All right. There's us with some of the guys in the G2 dorm. That was fun. And uh, those are some of our pictures. Here's a few more. Straining to hear through the door. Oh, those are hard to hear. Especially if somebody, you know, music is going yeah. on. Right. Right. It's hard to hear. So I, in a way, I want to go just turn off the music and just let us run through and say hello and talk to him. But at the right. same time, we wanted to share the music. So right. it really right. hard, really hard decision. But. It was great. I, I would really love to go back in some of those and, and maybe have some soft music going on, but be able to just spend some time saying hello. And thank and you to Chaplain Moss and Chaplain Miranda, I think yes. is how you say it. They were yes. so, so yes, great. so helpful and great. It was, oh, there is Chris singing Folsom Prison, but he did a stealth prison yeah, there. Yeah, he did a stealth prison <laughs> yes. there. Right. And he did they, a good job. That was the first it. time doing it live. Yeah. Uh, there's the sign language interpreter, which that was really cool to see. Yeah. And they gave Thank those you. guys, um, you know, front row reserve seats, which we love to see. There's some of those guys. All right. Well, there's just a few of our pictures. I love that picture there. That guy was worshiping and seeking God, and so many were. We were just honored to so be awesome. there, honored to be a part and get to meet all you guys. Uh, I have an announcement to make. Uh, Texas Cure, uh, you guys all know that, um, have parten- partnered with Wayland Baptist University in the Austin area. They're going to be doing something every Saturday until the 18th of May. Um, 
Now, the Wayland Baptist University is going to be offering, it's uh, like a counseling for families of the, the incarcerated. Awesome. Also, Texas Cure, until until May 18th, we'll, we'll be there every Saturday um, answering questions. They'll be... Um, helping write parole. Like, help 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 parole. Or yeah. inform yeah, help them how, asking, right? qu- Answering questions about parole. Just really any question that they have, you know, awesome. as far as, you know how things should go or, or, you know, just, he said just any questions really that they have about the, they're incarcerated, but you have to go to the website. That's uh, www.txcureinc.org. And there's an events tab. If you click on the events tab, it'll do a little drop down and then you look up for the, uh, the, the Texas Wayland or excuse me, the Wayland Baptist university counseling on yeah, that's the amazing. weekends. Yeah. What a great service. I uh, have a few announcements. Okay, so this podcast will be released on Wednesday, May 1st. It's the second at annual National Prayer Day of Prisoner Prayer. Yes. Uh, so if you hadn't forgotten about it uh, and you're watching this podcast, please continue to, to join us for prayer and praying. fasting 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. as we pray for all the nation's prisons and jails, for the families of the incarcerated, for the incarcerated, for the staff, for the administration, uh, for what God is doing behind the walls, this movement, this awakening, of God uh, to reach the lost all around us and the broken and the hurting. Uh, so we we thank you for joining us. We look forward to hearing from you, your stories about what God did on your unit. Uh, feel free to write us um, and tell us what's going on. Here's our list of upcoming units. And then, of course, we've also got our summer uh, tour. And I just got official confirmation from the Florida uh, volunteer director today that all of this is completely approved. So uh, we felt like it was going to be, but right. it's great to hear that. Um, so I have a few shout outs. I want to shout out Little Joe and the G5s. You've shouted out the Seggers at All Red Unit. Uh, Little Joe and all the G5s. Ryan Chavez and the El Paso County Annex. Uh, awesome to hear from you guys. David and Anthony at Robertson Unit, Bobby Kyle and the guys in Sioux Falls, South Dakota, uh, Blake in Lancaster, Texas, Alexander in Orange County Correctional, and Trey Sov in Nebraska State Penitentiary in Lincoln, Nebraska. Um, shout out a few guys from Estelle Unit, uh, FedEx who did the push-ups with me, uh, Jelly Roll, Diesel, D- Detroit, Quinn, uh, and all the guys that we got to meet And listen, there. somebody gave me a list. What? Well, we can't find it. It was so hectic. We were running from <laughs> from pod to yeah. pod and everything, and I don't know where it got placed. So if somebody wants to mail me another list of those who helped and you know leadership right. or whatever, please do so. You know, make sure that it's it's labeled as such that this is the Estelle leaders or what have you. But yeah. um, I'm so sorry. It's just it was just. It yeah. was crazy. Maybe right? one of the field ministers, uh, Jimmy, or one of the other guys can send that to us. Yes. That'd be great. Uh, just a few quick map pins this week. Lebanon, Indiana. Kearney, Nebraska. Stockton, California. Edinburgh, Indiana. Lucasville, Ohio. Fultonville, New York. Thornton, Pennsylvania. And every week, I'm always shocked that there's new pins right. that we can add to the map <laughs> yes. and new places that are just now listening. Uh, so if you don't see yourself on the map, make sure and write us and let us know. We'd love to put you on there. Awesome. Yeah. So my one of my favorite times is when we get to do letters. So I've got one here. It says, what's up? Come on, crew. <laughs> Last time I wrote you, I told you that we had a race with 72 girls for seven tablets. Mm. Wow. Real Vita spread around like COVID and the race <laughs> became harder. <laughs> but look how God works. We have received 72 personal tablets here wow. at Hillsborough wow. County That's in awesome. Tampa, Florida. That's awesome. So cool. Now Real Vita is played everywhere. It is so awesome. Listen, guys, I've been in this pod since November 1st, 2023, and at first everyone didn't know of y'all, but now everyone comes to me telling me how y'all have impacted them. My bunkie, I put her onto y'all and the Holy Spirit overflowed and she was in tears. That's Mm. awesome. I love y'all so much. Like Seven said, you are not going to hang with me and not receive Jesus. I'm the same with Jesus and Real Vida. I want to share with y'all that today, 16 girls will be joining my communion and I baptized my best friend with a bowl of water. Yay. Mm. I've been doing prayer circle 4 p.m. since February 21st, 2024, and it continues to grow. Women are becoming comfortable with prayer and stepping in faith and boldness. Vita family, months back, I would have never seen myself baptizing or presenting the salvation plan or giving communion, but it's not what I want, it's what God wants. His plans are 
unknown, but always good. He continues to mold me and change me into an amazing young woman. I want y'all to know y'all are a part of this change, and it's like a domino effect to my sisters in Christ around me. Today, we also had 36 girls attend the communion with cake and juice. Wow. Okay. It was such a beautiful— That's pretty good. Yes. <laughs> That's a good one. It was such a beautiful experience, and tomorrow I'm going to baptize another sister in Christ, and hopefully my numbers continue to grow. Come on. Amen. Yeah. Well, I know my father will multiply these numbers. I want to share with y'all that from the moment I started watching y'all to today, y'all have gotten me through the hardest and loneliest days. Y'all remind us that no matter how the system may look at us, y'all love us and see us past our mistakes. I'm grateful y'all allow God to use us, but also y'all have a burning desire to love us and share with us uh, some Jesus. Amen. Okay. Such Amen. a good one. Such a That's good letter. That's so cool. Right. God is doing much. You got a letter. Yes. Okay. So I, when you were reading that letter, this girl who's baptizing everybody, mm -hmm. I had this image of like back in the days of fighter pilots, they would have what were called fighter aces or whatever. And ace was a pilot who'd shot down more than five of the enemy planes. Cool. And so I like was thinking about this girl's like, she's getting her marks. Mm -hmm. I got Come another on. baptism, right? Uh, so I just think that's cool. All right. Here's a letter. It says, Dear Real Vita Ministries, I'm locked up uh, in Pennsylvania. My friends and I watch your podcast every day. First off, I just wanted to say thank you guys so much. You guys have made such a huge impact on our lives. Most of us knew God, but we're far away from him. Your podcast has opened all of our eyes to the Lord uh, and gave us a huge abundance of hope and positivity. You guys really have helped change our lives. My fellow inmate friends started a positivity group for us here on our block after watching your show and has really been a blessing for us because of how much negativity is swarming around us here. We have also started a Bible study and we are so deep into it and filled with the word of the good Lord and many great things have happened in this place. All of the people involved in this group have been baptized in here, but we have been constantly working on ourselves and working on getting fruit growing on our trees. That's cool. You are changing many lives daily with your messages. Thank you so much for your time and devotion. Nevin. Amen. So what did you say it was called? Uh, an ace was a fighter pilot who'd shot down more than five enemy planes. Okay. And this girl's definitely an Two ace aces. now. She's got, right. yeah, way got now. an ace right here. Yeah, come on. Okay, well, let's read about some more aces. Yeah, come on. All right. Okay, Real Vida, this is my first time writing. Let me tell you all about myself. I'm a 47-year-old Harley Davidson writing, heavily tattooed, and sorry, Jeremy. <laughs> I'm a diehard Kansas City Chiefs uh -oh. fan. Hey, we got no beef because Kansas City's my second team because of Patrick Mahomes. So all right. We're good. We're good. About four or five months ago, a man that I'm locked up with kept pushing and pushing me to watch the Real Vida podcast. At that time, I was a non-believer. Mm. So time went on and I saw the guys that watched the podcast were smiling and laughing. <laughs> okay. And I was like, what do they have that I don't? <laughs> so when no one was watching me, I grabbed my tablet and looked for y'all's podcast. Now I know what they had that I didn't. They had Jesus Christ. Come on. So yeah. now I do too. Yeah. I'm now a new believer, but still very lost with a lot of questions. I want to say thank you for everything each and every one of you do for us locked away and forgotten people. Please keep on doing what you do. It means so very much to all of us new believers. Wow. I love new believers. There's yeah. a new baby. We got to go Come peek on. at him. Okay. Right. Yeah. And so, and, and you know what? Somebody yeah. gave me some little, like little shoes mm. that they made. Come on. Um, you got some too. You haven't seen them yet. Oh yeah. Cause they did it for all the girls. So that I, it's so cute. <laughs> anyway, I got I got them. I you know, they're new believers, right? Yeah, yeah, so they're awesome. little like little shoes, and you know how um, people hung their little baby shoes before mm -hmm. on their. Yeah. So it's in my car. <laughs> on my mirror, That's I got awesome. the little baby okay. shoes. Baby booties. Oh yeah. my goodness, yeah. I love them. They're so cute. But anyway, yeah, this is awesome. And you know, he said he's a new believer and I still have a lot of questions. And you know what? That's okay. Yeah. And I want to answer those questions. Believe me, because mama wants you to know how to walk right. Yeah. Because there are plenty of people who are not walking right. In fact, I saw um, some things that were shocking this week, right? Um, going on even in the Christian community. And we have to let people know that there's some strange and unusual things going on. Listen to me. Yeah. We haven't ministered this on podcast, but at one point in the Bible, there was strange fire yeah. being burdened to the Lord. And he's like, this isn't, Yeah. no, this isn't worship for me. Right. This isn't the kind of 
incense I ask for or want or will accept. Right. You don't worship me in the way that I've told you to worship me. You're worshiping me the way you want to worship. And you put some strange things in this fire and I don't want anything to do with it. And I'm telling you that there's some strange fire going on, yes. right? So, you know, so there's some things that are new um, that weren't done before and maybe would have been frowned upon and, and are frowned upon some now. Some people don't believe in rap music. You know, we had a, a, a guy kind of some stuff, you know, his testimony, or whatever on before. And then he met somebody that told him rap music wasn't of the Lord, like no rap music. And so he don't believe in rap music, right? So there, there are things that are still, we know that rap, any music is of God. He made it all. He created every beat, right? Right. And so yeah. we know that that is, we know that, um, you know, there are things that are misunderstood, but at the same time, there are some things that are going too far. Right. And so that's something we're going to get to pretty soon is strange fire. I want you new believers to know what is good and what is and what is real and what is right. not and um, how to recognize it. It's got to line up with the word of God. If it's not lining up with the word of God, then it's absolutely not God. And so I guess we're going to go to a break if you guys don't have anything else. And then we'll be right back. Back. Okay, so we're back and we want to talk some about prayer because it's prayer day. Like right. when yeah, you get right. this, it's going to be prayer day where this is actually the night before prayer days. Twice the night before Christmas. <laughs> <Come> <laughs> and all through Vida Nation, Come right? On, yeah. Um, you know, the Holy Spirit is stirring, yes. right? And he's he's telling he's going to be on. telling you what to pray. When you don't know yes. what to pray, all of a sudden some things start coming yeah, to your mind, right. you know, your enemy comes to your mind and you're like, what? <laughs> you know, yeah. and God's right. like, yes, pray for right. him, pray for her, pray yes. for that crazy aunt, pray for, you know, the family member that you're estranged from and um, yeah. you're hurt by, you know, like things begin to come to you about prayer that the Holy Spirit leads. And so, you know, we all kind of looked at some things on prayer. I don't know um, how much we'll get out today, but I want Sam to go ahead and share what God's put on your heart, you know? Yeah, God's been actually talking to me about prayer for months now because yeah. that is my weak spot is prayer. Um, I'm a, I'm much rather read the word. That comes uh-huh. easier for me. Um, and so one of the the scriptures that he's continuous, continuously giving me is Hebrews eleven six, and mm-hmm. it says anyone who wants to approach God must believe that both He exists and that He cares enough to respond to those who seek Him. Yeah. And so on. I think sometimes. We can maybe just go through the motions and say things, but that we're not really believing what we're saying Mm. or that God is listening and God is always listening. And so it was funny because today when I was looking at all of these scriptures that God gave me, it just was like boom, boom, boom. And they all kind of went together. And so he led me to Mark and I'm been, I'm reading all these out of the message. And so Mark 11, 22, it says, Jesus was matter of fact, embrace this God life. Really embrace it and nothing will be too much for you. This mountain, for instance, just say, go jump in the lake. No shuffling or shilly shallying, and it's as good as done. And in the New Living Translations, it says you must believe it and have no doubt in your heart. So when I read no shuffling or no shilly shallying, it's like, this isn't a game, you know? Mm. I, I don't need you to be like, not taking it serious. Like, because if you say something like for this mountain to go in the lake, it's going to happen if, if your faith is there, right? So that's why I urge you to pray for absolutely everything, ranging from small to large. Include everything as you embrace this God life and you'll get God's everything. And I like that too. Like, it doesn't always have to be this huge prayer. It can be the small things because God cares about the small things. And so in Psalm 17, 6, it says, I call to you, God, because I'm sure of an answer. Come on. So we have to be sure that not only are we saying these prayers, but that they're not going unheard, that we can absolutely know that God is one listening and wants to help you with whatever it is you're petitioning. Absolutely. You know, so it's talking about faith. Um, I will say that there's a, a different probably expectation from a baby to an adult, Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know? Sure. Um, We grow in that faith. Right. You know, the father says, try me, test me, right? To see that I'm in good. Like when you come to him and you're like, Lord, if you're real, please show me. Like he's okay with that. 
you know, um, to, to be tried, to be tested, to he hears you, you know, he knows your heart if it's sincere and, and he's listening to that. And yeah. then the other thing I would say about what Sam said, she said um, she was weaker on prayer and she was more a reader. Hmm. Right. And, and that's normal. Like, okay. So I probably mentioned this before, like I noticed that women are either cooks or cleaners. Mm -hmm. Like if they like to cook, they don't usually like to clean. If they like to clean, they don't usually like to cook. Now they might do both because they made themselves learn mm -hmm. the other one, but they lean towards something. And so I always told my sons, you know, you better know what you want because it's either a cook or a cleaner. <laughs> like, you know, if you want somebody who cooks good, she might not clean very much or, or well, um, mm -hmm. you know. And so, yeah, my, my eldest son for a while, he was with a girl that was a cleaner. She yeah. was a cleaner. She didn't yeah. really cook. She was mostly a cleaner, <laughs> you know, um, and she cleaned really well. I mean, it was spotless, but yeah, cooking, not so much, you know. <laughs> and so, but it's, it is actually normal um, mm. that you got to kind of push yourself to develop the other thing. You might be naturally drawn to prayer, 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 yes. but not feeding yourself in the word mm -hmm. and um, enough. I think I have always leaned more towards prayer. Yeah. You know, because that communication with God talking back and forth, um, I don't know. It just, it just easier. Yeah. Like w walking around the house, taking a walk in the middle of the night, three o'clock in the morning is a yeah. perfect time to talk to Jesus. And um, I do it often, you know, so I'm, I'm more, more on prayer and communication with God yes. in that way than the reader probably, although I've read right? They're yeah. red and red and red too. Um, so, so yeah, we have to push ourselves to be the other one and that, that does come natural. Yeah. So, um, you know, whenever we're preparing, we usually don't ever compare notes. So it's always amazing to see how the Holy Spirit leads all of us, uh, in the same direction that he's going, uh, separately. And so I want to show you this image. We're going to put it up on the screen now. Um, and it's of a conversation. And that's what I was hearing God say is that prayer is to be a conversation. Communication. You have, mm -hmm. you have a conversation with someone you have a relationship with, you know, and that's why we say, you know, Christianity is not about religion, some dogma or doctrine. It's about a relationship right. with God. And I love that scripture that Sam shared. I call to you, God, because I'm sure of an answer. I mm -hmm. know that when I have a conversation with yeah. you, there's going to be an interchange, right? Um, and so I, I've got this image too. I use this in a, a message that I preached years ago about prayer. Have you ever seen someone that maybe you're in a conversation with them, but it's very clear that they only want to hear themselves speak. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. all they do is they're talking and it's like you're the empty chair, right? Yes. Uh, and so, you know, that is not relationship. That's not good communication. And sometimes I think people lack the balance of listening to God and, and going to God, you know, right. boldly with their, their prayers. But it is really about relationship and um, Listen, it's so you good. Know, yeah. when, and when that happens, like when I meet someone in, it's hard enough for me to talk. Um, it takes a lot of strength. <laughs> I know. <laughs> yes. I know that sounds weird, but um, you know, I'm I'm older and fatigued. You know, I have a blood disorder. You know, kind of things like that. So, it already takes enough strength to do that. So, if I notice that they don't really have any interest in anything that I have to say, and they really just want to hear themselves, and I notice that pretty quickly, I just stop talking. So, you know, don't we think that the, the Father, our Lord God, if, yes. if we aren't listening and he's talking and talking, he's like, okay, you got this, right? I'll, I'll right. just stop talking and you can just go ahead because, you know, you aren't listening anyway. So why waste my breath? Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're designed for relationship with God and God designed prayer to be like that. Um, you know, I, I wanted, to, I, Eve was talking about what people like 10 to. Uh, Sam said she's more of a word person than prayer. She has to work a little bit for prayer. Eve's uh, more, prayer. more dominant with yeah. prayer. I'm definitely more dominant with the word. Mm. Uh, and yeah, so God sure. has really been having me the last few years work on prayer because it's something, it's like any good athlete. Uh, if they want to be a well-rounded athlete, they have to work on the thing that they're not good at. Yeah, okay, right. so I'm really strong, but I need to work on my speed. So they, they're going to spend more time working on their speed. I've been trying to develop prayer as a discipline and a practice. And so uh, one of the first places I want to start today is just hearing God. And I've got this little image, uh, you know, a, a child is all ears. You yes, know? I love that.
God always talks about having childlike faith for that kind of reason. We need to start with, to me, listening for what God has to say yes. um, uh, in prayer. And there's a way to do that uh, in prayer. I, I think this is important. I use this example for years. Uh, if you've ever had your car aligned, and it may or may not have been a time where I hit curbs quite a bit uh, because I was distracted and not paying attention. And so then your car gets out of alignment, right? So a car that's out of alignment, what's it going to do? It's going to pull off to the left. It's going to pull off to the right, whichever way the alignment's uh, out of line. And really the purpose of prayer, of us going to God, is to get back aligned with God's will for our life. Uh, We need to get back off of our own because many times you may be praying and asking God, you know, Garth Brooks had that song, thank God for unanswered prayers, right? As we're wasting a lot of time sometimes praying about stuff that has absolutely nothing to do uh, with the will of God for our lives, even what's best for us. You know, you think about in the Sermon on the Mount, Jesus was talking about, uh, you know, suppose your child asked you for a stone you know, are you? if you ask for bread, are you going to give them a stone, right? And the flip that I've always used is if the child asks you for a snake, are you going to give him a snake? No, you're going to give him a fish. You're going to give him what's good for him. So God has our best interest at heart in prayer. And what we need to do is stop seeking things that are out of line with his will. And the way we do that is relationship, conversation, um, listening to God. Yes. I mean, you know, you got, I love that picture of the speak, Lord, I'm listening that, you know, speak, Lord, I'm listening. It reminds me of Samuel, right? When, when God was calling his name and he says, go ahead, like I'm all ears. I I want to hear what you've got to say. And the answer does not always come in, in you knowing his voice like Samuel did, you you don't recognize the voice you never knew, right? And right. so it comes many times when you're, especially when you're new in the Lord through the sermon, it comes in seeking his word on the particular issue that you have question with or what have you. It comes through people around you sometimes those that are in the Lord, sometimes yes. somebody don't even know what they're saying and it may not even be in the Lord, but you know, it's specifically speaking to something you've asked about or you needed to know, or, you know, yes. God is showing you something. So it comes, his answer comes in many ways yes. and you're learning and developing this communication, right? So, so I'll give this example as Ada came, right? And she came with walls and my goodness, I've been through a whole lot myself uh, in ministry, even for 35 years. And so um, we didn't know each other as well. You don't open up as much because you don't know each other as well. So you're going to try to keep some of your personal stuff personal. (laughs) Um, Because you don't know this person, you don't know what they're going to do with it. You don't know they're going to judge you. You don't know what they're going to think. You don't know what they're going to disagree or whatever it is. Right. As we gone along, right, day after day, more and more being around each other, there's more trust. There's built there. There's more communication. Yeah. And I think, you know, it's developed for sure with the Lord as you're you're little and you're young in, in the Lord. And then you begin to grow your communication. It's easier at yeah. first as a baby. You don't understand. It's like this babbling. Can you imagine? I mean. Well, we can't because we can't remember a baby and you're saying all these words and they just smile because yes. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know what in the world you're saying. Sometimes they imitate you and blah, blah, blah. But, um, but as they keep listening, these these babblings begin to make sense and take form and they mm-hmm. begin even to form these words and understand these words. And that's how it is in the Lord. So even Lord lingo, right? Church lingo. Right. We say something. It was so cute. Somebody wrote me during the radio days and he had never known God. And so he said, I don't know what it is about your radio program. Like I've never gone to church. I've never heard it. He said, he said, but you know, you always say, okay, we're going to be back with the word. And he put it in, he put it in quotations. (laughs) Um, You know, he said the word, I always hear you say the word, but he didn't, he wasn't familiar enough with it to know what it meant. Wow. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. And so, so now maybe he does after all this mm-hmm. time later realize that the word, I mean, the word of God. Yes. Yeah, I think he was taking it like, you know, in the secular word, bro. Right. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know, word, you're man? coming back yeah. with the word. Right. Yeah. Um, like he didn't yeah. know exactly what it meant. Yeah. So as you go, 
Mm. And you know what's also really cool about you saying when babies babble and you don't really know what they're saying, the parents will start to, they'll interpret for you like, oh, she means this right. or oh, he means yeah, this. Right. Yes. And that's what's really cool about God as your father who cares about yes. you and knows your heart. If you feel like prayer, you're just developing this gift, you just say Come what's on. on your heart yeah. and God's going to meet you where you're at. Yes. And he's like, I know what you're saying. Yeah. Exactly. Like, I hear your heart. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I want to just talk for a minute between uh, about the difference between listening and hearing. So there is a difference, right? Hearing right. just means uh, that that your ears and the, all the the mechanisms in the ear that God created are recognizing a sound that's coming through. Background noise. You, you perceive a sound. Uh, there's sound waves and they're hitting the tympanic membrane, right? Listening is different. It's a mental process that requires concentrating on the sound. It's intentional. Deriving meaning from the sound and reacting to the sound that you've heard, right? So here's a, just a few little differences. Hearing is accidental. Like some sometimes, you know, you'll hear some huge boom or whatever. You weren't trying to hear that. It's just so loud and, you know, the right. sound hits your ears. It's involuntary. It's effortless. You can do it in the middle of the night. You can be asleep and you can hear something loud, right? Listening is very different. It's focused, it's voluntary and it's intentional. Right. Uh, and so, you know, there was, they did a study, a scientific study of over 8,000 people employed in businesses, hospitals, universities, uh, military, government, you know, people that have important jobs. And everybody believed that they communicated as effectively or more effectively than their coworkers. But what they ended up finding out that wasn't true uh, is, is that they they were focused on what they were saying and not on what someone was saying to them. So they could deliver a message, but they couldn't receive a message. So I always put this image up when we're talking about this, um, you know, is hear no evil rider. The, the monkey is, is, is not listening. And that's unfortunately what we do in conversation with people. And sadly, uh, many times in conversation with God is we're not. Oh, it's like a little kid. La, yeah. La, la, la. Yeah, yeah. Right. Okay. So even mentioned Samuel and that's where, I wanted to just read a few scriptures there in 1 Samuel chapter 3. It's a really great story about when Samuel the prophet was a little boy and he was serving the Lord in the temple. Uh, and it says in verse 1, Meanwhile, the boy Samuel served the Lord by assisting Eli. And in those days, messages were very rare and visions were quite uncommon. It says, One night, Eli, who was almost blind, had gone to bed. The lamp of God had not yet gone out. And Samuel was sleeping in the temple uh, near the ark of God in the tabernacle. Suddenly the Lord called out Samuel. Yes, Samuel replied, what is it? He got up and ran to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, Eli replied. Go back to bed. So he did. Then the Lord called out again, Samuel. Again, Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? I didn't call you, my son. Eli said, go back to bed. Samuel did not yet know the Lord because he had never heard a message from the Lord before. He wasn't used to God's voice, right? So the Lord called a third time and once more Samuel got up and went to Eli. Here I am. Did you call me? Then Eli realized it was the Lord who was calling the boy. So he said to Samuel, go and lie down again. And if someone calls again, say, speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went back to bed and the Lord came and called as before. Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel replied, speak, your servant is listening. Then the Lord said to Samuel, there's a difference in the, the Hebrew words that are used here between speak and said, because until Samuel was ready to listen and hear what God was saying, then the Lord couldn't actually speak to him. He said, I'm about to do a shocking thing in Israel. And it was the beginning of Samuel's prophetic ministry, that moment when he first recognized God's voice and he chose to start listening to God. So the example I use a lot is this verse right here, Proverbs chapter two, verse one. And it shows an old school radio. And I told the guys at uh, Estelle this last weekend, if you're a young guy, you don't even know what it's like to tune a radio because everything's digital nowadays. But back in the old days, you had to tune radios and TVs to the right channel, right? Um, and so this verse says, listen to what I say, my child, and treasure my commands. Tune your ears to wisdom, concentrate on understanding, cry out for insight and ask for understanding. Search for them as you would for silver, seek them like hidden treasures, and then you will understand 
what it means to fear the Lord, and you will gain knowledge of God. So this is part of the way that we learn to listen to God is by focusing on what he's saying, by concentrating, by crying out, by seeking God in prayer. And one of the coolest things to me um, is getting the letters from guys and women all over the country who are starting their relationship to God to recognize God's voice speaking to them. Right. So one of the ways I, I want to talk about that God kind of trains your ear into knowing his voice is say you're reading a scripture, um, talking about it. Maybe you keep seeing it. Mm. Um, and, and then you go to church and somebody preaches on it. Mm -hmm. They mention it. Like it just keeps coming up. You hear it on the radio, you hear it on a podcast. Right. And you're like, Whoa, I was just talking about that. I was just thinking about that. I was just praying about that. Right. God is teaching you to hear his voice, you know, training you until you get to the point where you don't have to hear it over and over and over. Um, that, you know, once he speaks to you, once he gives you a scripture or something, you know, he's speaking to you, although he still will confirm so many times things that he's saying to you over and over. Right. Right. Especially important things. But it's, it's cool. As you develop that gift, it's like when I didn't know my wife, I never would have recognized her voice but we've been married for 27 years now. And so when I hear her voice, I immediately know that it's her. It's like the guys that we met that were visually impaired uh, at Estelle this weekend, they couldn't see her, but they heard her voice. And and of course their ears are developed yes. to hearing even better yes. than the norm. Yeah, so. and there's a whole sermon right there, mm-hmm. you know. Uh, but it was cool because they immediately heard, that's Mama Eve, because mm-hmm. uh, they knew your voice. Uh, so it's neat when we developed that gift. Um, just a few scriptures about just hearing God. Call to me, it says in Jeremiah 33, 3, this is one of my favorite scriptures, and I will answer you, and I will tell you great and unsearchable things that you do not know. Amen. Like, Let's start a conversation, God's saying. Let's let's have some communication here, a little back mm-hmm. and forth exchange. Let's have a relationship. I sought the Lord and he answered me, Psalm 34, 4. Um, and of course, listening equals learning. Um, so, um, so I love this image here of this dog. Um, he just is saying, are you listening? You know, he's all ears, just like the baby was. And and that's how I want to be with God. I want to be, I don't want to miss anything that God is saying. If it's important enough to God to speak it to me, I absolutely have to hear it. It's essential, uh, for my, myself, for my family, for this ministry. I have to hear God. So I want to focus on that, but I do also want to talk just a minute about the other side of the conversation. Uh, And so, um, you know, there's a legal example I want to give because it's not just us listening to God. That's important. We have to hear his voice and listen and apply it. But also we have to activate our faith like Sam was talking about in those scriptures and tell God what we want, what we need. The Bible is very clear uh, about that. And so I was thinking about legal uh, pleadings. So here's a petition. I'm a civil lawyer. um, And so whenever I'm going to file a case, I have to put in the case pleading, the petition, it's called a demand sometimes, depending on what court it's in. Uh, I have to put in the demand what it is I'm seeking. So, you know, Chris works with me on personal injury cases. So if we've got a, a client that had an accident and their vehicle's damaged and it hasn't been paid for, we have to ask specifically for property damage, um, you know, monetary relief. If they were injured, then we have to put medical bills in the past. If they're going to need surgeries in the future, we have to say medical bills in the future. Um, If they've lost earnings, we have to say that. If you don't ask for one of those things and you go to trial, you can't ask the jury for it. Even if you lost $100,000 in wages because of the accident, you can't ask for it. You have to plead for the relief that you're seeking. You also have to file it in the proper court. So I can't, Eve used this example recently, and it's true. You cannot seek custody of a kid in a county other than the county in which that child lives. The law states that that is the only county that can hear matters related to custody. So there's jurisdiction also, and there's the proper venue. And so sometimes um, we have to ask God for what we need. And if we don't ask, how can you expect God to answer your prayer, right? Um, 
So in Philippians 4, 6, it says, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Okay, so what I want to talk about right there, even in that scripture, be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with Thanksgiving. Come on. Don't forget that. Right. Don't forget that. Um, let your requests be made known unto God. And so, so you know, prayer is about communication. Yeah. But it is also requests. It is also bringing God into your situation. We are in this world and there are spiritual laws. Yeah. Jurisdictions, right? And so we're in this world, but we are not of it. And because of that, because we have become children of God, we can request him in yeah. to our situation or someone else's situation. It requires prayer. Prayer is important. Why don't God just make everything happen? Everybody wants God waving a magic wand, wand around. Mm. And they're like, why did he let this happen? And why did that happen? And why? And so many times it's because of the lack of prayer in that situation from anyone in it. Yeah. And so we have to bring God into that jurisdiction, right? By prayer allows yes. that in. Okay. So it is, prayer is communication, but it is other things. I, I do want to read just the simple. They were asking in Matthew chapter six, when you pray, okay, he's giving, he's giving instructions about prayer. Verse five, when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites who love to pray publicly on the street corners and in the synagogues where everyone can see them. I tell you the truth, this is all the reward they'll ever get. When you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door behind you and pray to your father in private. And then your father who sees everything will reward you. And so on. one of the things about prayer is saying, don't do it for show. Right. right. What are you motivated by? right? If the only time you pray is when you pray in front of the chapel service, right? Then what are you doing? It's about a show. You don't really right. do it. So he's saying, watch your motive when you pray. When you pray, don't babble on and on, verse seven, as people mm. of other religions do. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. It's ridiculous, right? right? Well, right. Just because you prayed the same prayer um, you know, 70 times right. at, at my, at my cousin's funeral, um, some years ago, that's what was happening. They said, you need to pray this prayer. They told those ladies 80 times. Wow. So for 80 times there, they were repeating the same words over and over. Like God is deaf and he can't hear you until wow. the 80th time. Like that, that's what it says. This is just don't get mad right, at me, right? right. I want to teach you, if you are new in Christ, I want you to know that repeating some mantra over and over and over does not move the hand of God. Yes. Right? And so it says, don't do that. It's not me that says it. The Bible says it. They think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again. Don't be like them. Don't. For your yeah. father knows exactly what you need. Just what I just said. Mm, he right. knows yeah. what you need. He don't need yeah. you to tell him 20 times. Boy, I'm so annoyed. Yeah. <laughs> like, you know, when somebody's <laughs> telling me, like, you know, I'm going to go to the store and say, my daughter says, mom, can you get me some chips? I'm like, yes. Right. And we said it very clearly. Um, and then she goes like, mom, are you gonna get, can you get me some chips? <laughs> yes, I, I will. <laughs> mom, can you get me? Some, I heard you <laughs> on the first two times. Right. <laughs> mom, can you give me fourth time? You say that again. I'm not getting you no chips. <laughs> right. <laughs> I'm tired of hearing this. I'm right? just thinking about that. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So, so he says, right. I know he knows what you need even before you asked. Right. Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, we even know that some, when we go to the store, we know some certain things that our, our daughter likes. She likes some cranberry juice. She yep. wants some cranberry juice, right? She, yeah. li she likes cheese. these specific things. She <laughs> loves cheese. Yeah. She loves cheese. She eats yeah. a lot of cheese, right? Yeah. So she wants cheese. I mean, we know what she likes even before she asks. That's right. Right. How much yeah. more our father in Come heaven. Yeah. So he said, okay, so when you pray, pray like this. Right. Our father in heaven, right? We know, we know this. Hallowed be thy name. And in, in, in this NLT, it says, may your name be kept holy. I like, I like what it says. It's a little yeah. clear. Hallowed be thy name. I, I want to keep your name holy. Remember who you're coming Come on. to. Yeah. Now, I don't know about other, 
other races, but I know Hispanic culture. You know, when we go into our household, we go to grandma's house, our mom and dad are like, salúdele a tu, a tu tía, salúdete a tu, tu mamá, or saluda a tu abuela. You know, they're like, say greet, go greet your grandma. Like, you're getting in trouble before you ever got in. You didn't even, <laughs> like, you know, yeah, you make sure you say hello to your grandma, say hello to your aunt, say hello to your cousin. What's wrong with you? You know, yeah. Um, that's a constant that we hear in our household. And he's saying it. Yeah, come on. And and let's just think for ourselves, right? If somebody, all they ever do when they come in our presence is just ask for something. Right. And then they don't even say hello. Like, he's like, keep my name holy. Keep in your mind who I am. Come, come in in a humble attitude. Yes. Come in with Deferential. gratitude. Yeah. And come in with knowing I am the deity. I am the God the only God, but deify me. Remember who I am. Right. Yeah, yeah. And so, I mean, he says, come in like that first. Come on. Come in with respect and the proper honor that you should have the proper way. Mm. And then may your kingdom come soon. May your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So he's not saying, listen, people get it so mixed up. I want you to repeat. Remember, he just said, don't repeat the same prayer over and over. That's not how it works. <laughs> right. Well, they repeat this prayer. <laughs> yes. When he was giving a sample of that prayer. Yes. He was saying, remember who I am and how you come in in gratitude, worship, and praise. Right. And in greeting. And then pray that your will, my will be done and not your own. Come because on. I know better than you do. Yes. And we come in with demands and God, I need you to do this, or I want you to do this. When that's not what we need, he said, and if you pray for a a snake, am I going to give that to you as your father? Right. If your child, and your child does, because your child is silly, right? If he wants to go play with a nice tiger at the zoo, right? And put me over the wall, you're not going to do that. If <laughs> you're a they good asked, parent. Right. Yeah, right. Even though he wants that with all of his heart. <laughs> because he's going to get killed. Right. And Come so he on. says, pray that my will be done. Yes. Lord, do your will in my life and give us today our daily bread, or here it says the food that we need, or our daily bread. But listen, mm -hmm. our daily bread is not just the food that we need physically, but the food that we need spiritually. Yes. Lord, let me hear, let me read, let me find what you are saying to me today. And we need to eat spiritually every day yeah. like we eat naturally every day and yes. we eat a lot <laughs> i know <laughs> yeah. i do right i love me some food i've been loving too much food lately and so he's saying give me what i need today yeah. to get me through because today's a hard day yes. right tomorrow is another situation lord i need mm. today what i need and forgive me of my sins remind yourself even who you are you right. need to be forgiven not washed one time you were saved yeah. But now we have a daily walk. And then you remember, you know what? I shouldn't have said that today. Mm. I I thought a wrong thought today. Lord, help me to think better. Change my th thought process. Like, forgive us our sins. Come on. And then, you know what? If you're going to ask for forgiveness of your sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Come on. So maybe to that moment, you're a grump and you're angry about what somebody did to you and hurt you. And in that moment, you remember, I need forgiveness too. Help me to forgive them. Yeah. And don't let us yield to temptation, but rescue us from the evil one. So it mm. is a sample of prayer. Yes. He didn't say pray this. He said pray like this. Right. But I love every single thing you went through in the prayer here because when we were given the example about aligning your car, your car's out of alignment. So I'm asking for the wrong things. I'm seeking the wrong things. But when you come to God respectfully, when you come to him acknowledging who he is and asking that his will be done, not your will be done, it lines you up. So you stop praying for things like some people think that as you mature, you get more powerful in prayer. It's not what it is. As you mature, you pray what God's will is and you see those things begin to take place in your life. And so I do want to um, share this scripture too. It's Hebrews 4.16. And um, it actually starts back in verse 14. It says, So then, since we have a great high priest who has entered heaven, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold firmly to what we believe. This high priest of ours understands our weaknesses, for he faced all the same testings we do, yet he did not sin. 
So because of that, it says, so let us come boldly to the throne of our gracious God. There we will receive his mercy and we will find grace to help us when we need it most. And I was um, giving you the example of, of legal kind of pleadings and stuff. And I was reminded of when I first passed a bar and I was just a baby lawyer. And the first time I went to court on my own after I had passed a bar, I was very nervous. Like I was just a wreck inside, so anxious because I didn't know what I was doing. I was not confident in who I was because I didn't know what, it, yes. And now when I go to court, you know, I'm going to court. It's just another Monday. It's another Thursday. I've done it thousands of times. I know exactly what I'm doing. When I go in the courtroom, I know what I'm asking for. I'm going to boldly, very boldly ask the judge to give me what my client needs. Um, because I've developed that experience now, I now know, right? And so I just want uh, all of you to, to come boldly to the throne of grace, understanding that you and I, we don't deserve anything. We're not doing it in our own merit. We're not doing it with our own works. It's God's work. Uh, it's his power. It's his will. And when we line ourselves up with his will, you're going to see prayers coming true, coming to pass over and over again because it's his will. So, you know, there's so much to say because yes. so he kind of gave this this prayer example as this widespread covering that mm -hmm. we could teach more in detail, probably on every line. Right. Yes. So, you know, one of the things, a, a scripture that says, you know, if you have ought against any, when you come before the Lord, hey, stop a minute, let's go get that fixed and come, come back. If you want the Lord to forgive you, then you must forgive others. Like there's so many scriptures on this that we can't get into all of today. So this is like a blanket covering. Yeah. of the big picture of prayer. So I hope that you are receiving and, and learning some that it is, as it is the day of prayer and, you know, maybe more than you knew and you'll get better and better at it, yeah. you know, hearing the Lord and learning how to communicate and learning what to pray and when to pray as well. And that when, when he doesn't answer you, sometimes when you're asking for a specific thing, it's because he knows more. Yes. He knows more than us. And sometimes he answers a prayer in a way that we didn't expect. Right. You know, we thought it was going to look different yeah. than that, you know? Um, yeah. I, I'm just thinking about some of my own, right? Me when too. I When I prayed, <laughs> right. I prayed, you know, some time ago, you know, that somebody would contact me and they did. Now it wasn't very nice. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, oh, no, that kind of went better. But um, but they did, you know. It doesn't always look like what we think it's going to mm -hmm. um, when God answers us. So just keep that in mind. Another thing to keep yeah. in mind too is to not try to pray like somebody else. Yeah. Just right. like we all have our own individual gifts and callings, we right. have our own relationship with God. And he's not looking for you to sound a certain way, which is sometimes things that I have to tell myself. He made me and my personality, and he wants to have that relationship with me and my personality. He's not looking right. for an act or you got to speak a certain way or anything like Big that. Big words. Right. He yeah. just wants to hear your heart. Absolutely. And whatever that. And sometimes I'm in there and I've had a bad day and I'm just like, okay, God, I'm going to vent for a second. And then I just sit there like I would with Eve or right. like I would with Jeremy or whatever. And then, you know, it's just, it's just right. developing that relationship. You don't have to have it sound a certain way. Talking to God just the way you would talk to anybody else. There's no certain holy holy sound that you have to have. He hears yeah. you, you're his kid, and he understands your lingo and your heart and your language that way. So I'm going to ask Sam actually to pray Amen. this one out. Okay. Heavenly Father, we just thank you so, so much for who you are in this opportunity to grow closer to you, God. I just ask that you be with all of our brothers and sisters and their families around the nation today as we are praying and fasting uh, just for your will and God, I just ask that you be with everybody and we just pray for all the COs and all the wardens and, and everybody involved in Vita Nation. We are all uh, in this together, God. And, and I just ask that you move so mightily um, and that we're gonna hear some crazy, crazy things from everybody sending us letters of things that you have done, Amen. things that they have uh, grown in, uh, developed, um, all of these crazy miracles that I know are coming because you are preparing yes. uh, your soul behind bars for what you have for them to do in this season. We just thank you, God. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.